In this video of USMLE Step 1 High Yield Series, we will talk about Gullian Barre Syndrome. It is an acute, rapidly progressing, demyelinating autoimmune disorder of peripheral nerves. It is also known as acute inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy, in short, AIDP. The risk factors include preceding infections of Campylobacter jejuni, several viral infections, and in rare cases, influenza vaccination. The clinical presentations include, for motor system, there is an ascending paralysis, which is symmetric and progressing over days. The pattern is distal to proximal, usually known as the stocking and glove pattern. In severe cases, this paralysis can ascend further and can involve the muscles of respiration and diaphragm. In that case, it can lead to severe respiratory problems and can also lead to death. Sensory system involvement is presented by stocking and glove pattern of paresthesia. There is also autonomic dysregulation and areflexia. Visible symptoms include numbness in hands and legs, which correspond to the motor anomaly, tingling sensation in hands and feet, which correspond to the sensory modality. There is swallowing difficulty and shortness of breath when the disease becomes severe and involves the muscles of respiration and deglutination. Diagnosis involves nerve conduction velocity study, which is known as NCV. There is a decreased NCV, that is nerve conduction velocity, indicating a diffuse demyelination. Myelination increases the nerve conduction velocity but over here demyelination reduces the velocity also you can do a lumbar puncture and by that you can collect CSF in that CSF you will see increase in the level of proteins particularly albumin whereas there is almost no pleomorphic cells this phenomenon of increased protein and decreased or nil cells present is known as albuminocytological dissociation a very important differential diagnosis emerges at this point, which is tick-borne paralysis. Both GB syndrome and tick-borne paralysis are ascending paralysis. However, in case of tick-borne paralysis, there is no albuminocytological dissociation in CSF, as well as there is absence of autonomic dysregulation. Treatment includes plasmapheresis and intravenous immunoglobulins as the first line. Corticosteroids are not usually indicated. Frequent monitoring of respiratory function is essential to determine the need of ICU admission in case of impending respiratory failure. Aggressive physical rehabilitation is needed and the recovery may take up to one year. In summary, gullian barre syndrome is acute inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy, that is AIDP. It is characterized by ascending paralysis there is autonomic involvement and there is albuminocytological dissociation on CSF studies. These are known as the four A's of gullian barre syndrome. I hope by now you have got a clear idea of gullian barre syndrome. To get high quality notes and flashcard, you can follow us on our Facebook and Instagram page at Animated Biology with Arpan. Also, we need your support to make free high quality content. For that, you can contribute using the super thanks icon present on the bottom right corner of this video. You can contribute using Paytm, Paypal or UPI. Also, you can go to our Patreon page and support us there. If you wish to connect, use the following links and for medicine related content, you can follow the Nerd Medic on YouTube. Until then, bye bye. See you in the next one.